Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing Zoho Commerce. Now, Zoho Commerce is a relatively new e-commerce platform, hasn't been in the market that long. It used to be sold only independently, but recently has been joined in with Zoho One. And this is a brand new account and I've not provisioned it yet. So let's go through how to do that. Okay, so I'm on the Zoho One page and I'm gonna click the dots over here, which says more apps. Then I'm going to come up to this unassigned apps area. I'm going to click on that one. And then as I scroll down here, you can see we've got commerce. Now I'm going to select add. Now, because I have a partner account, this is being kidnapped by my other side. So I'll jump in over there, but generally you would just select that, hit next, and it will automatically provision it for the first time. So here we are in Zoho Commerce. Now, Zoho Commerce is kind of like Shopify, WooCommerce, now, the reason why you would go with Zoho Commerce is because it's connected to the rest of Zoho. You've already got inventory. You've already got sales IQ, which is a chatbot. You've already got books, which is the accounting software. And, and you've got things like PageSense and a whole bunch of other Zoho applications that you can use. Now, there's some pros and there's some cons. You can go down the whole WordPress route and you can build something really, really custom. It needs a lot of maintenance. You can go down the whole Shopify route, a little bit more expensive from a license perspective but a lot cleaner experience. The hosting is managed by somebody else. The uptime, the security is all managed for you and the back end's quite usable, but then you've got to plug a whole bunch of stuff into it. And then you've got Zoho, which is new to the market in terms of e-commerce platforms. So it's not as in depth as what you would hope that it is. In particular, yes, it has a marketplace, but there's not a lot of apps to plug in. Yes, it can be customized, but there's some features that just don't quite hit the mark. For example, if you wanna have multi-layered pick list variables, it's actually really hard to do. But if you wanna add shipping charges, sometimes those shipping charges are compounding and then your product ends up being really expensive. So it doesn't have a lot of smarts in the back end there. It also makes drop shipping really hard because you can't plug it into a lot of things. Yes, there's APIs into e-commerce carts or into other accounting softwares for inventory and things like that, but then you end up having to pay you know, 50 bucks a month for the integration and then it's not that great. And every time you change something, you've got to go back. Anyway, there's a whole saga behind it, but let's dive in and have a look anyway. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more of an unboxing video. I have used this a couple of times. There are some orders and I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to use my image at some point to block some things so you don't see email addresses because otherwise YouTube's going to block me. All right, so we're here we're on the dashboard. You can see it's asking me to add products to publish the site, which I've done already. And you can choose themes, taxes, pretty simple. Payment, you can plug in things like Stripe, PayPal, etc. And once you plug it into Zoho Books, then that Stripe account is consistent throughout the rest of Zoho. So whether you're using it in billings, whether you're using it in inventory, and whether you're using it in Zoho Commerce. You've got your template here, so we can browse templates. We can see we've got some designs here, and it's just your drag and drop builder, kind of like what you get with Zoho sites. And you can select a theme that's gonna work for you. You can use product categories, as you can see here, you've got some individual products, but you might then have like, you know, power tools, categories could be like furniture, but then you break it down to indoor furniture and outdoor furniture. We come down here, sometimes people might be selling services. Now here's another thing that frustrates some people. If you need to sell subscription products, you can do that with things like Shopify, but when you come into Zoho, which also has Zoho billing, AKA subscriptions, you think, oh, that would be good. I can bring in some products, but they're two totally different things. So I would need to use Zoho subscriptions to build a product and then embed that product into the website as an independent widget. So you can't then have subscription box products that then draw down from inventory. So for example, in Shopify, you can create a, let's say a coffee subscription, sell a one-off coffee machine and a subscription for coffee in the same cart but you can't do that in Zoho. You could then have it so that every time you sell that particular item that it deducts the inventory, but you can't do that in Zoho because subscriptions or billing won't allow you to deduct the inventory. Certainly not with any level of ease and finesse in terms of settings. You would have to do some serious coding to get that to happen. Okay, so I wanna set up a coffee shop. 
and I'm going to look for some kind of theme that's just going to allow me to do that. And let's go through here. And this one seems to be ready to go for copy. Now I'm just going to live demo the site just so I can see what it looks like. And I can see we've got some buttons across the top with some categories. So we've got coffee, tea, there's a contact form, a terms and conditions page, we've got a cart and then a search. You can also add this nice little banner so you can give a, a reason for someone to sign up. We've got this rotating banner, we can scroll down. Now they've got start a subscription here, but I presume that that would be to run a link to a subscription product page in Zoho Billing. Now, whilst I just said that you couldn't do certain things, you can absolutely send a link and pay for a subscription. But then the complexity comes in the management in the back end. Okay, so we've got our products here. As you can see, the star ratings. We can come down. Obviously, this is in rupees at the moment because it's an Indian software, but we can change that. You've got the sections that you can add in. We've got some colors and, and things that we can change. And you can sign up to the newsletter, which would also go into Zoho campaigns or Zoho marketing automation, just depending on how you want to do it. I like that. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to install that theme. So I'm going to start afresh with a new template because I had set up one in the past just as a muck around. Okay, so that one's installing and that one's probably ready to go by now. So you saw that little card that just popped up. Some jobs are asynchronous, it'll run in the background and then there'll be a little card that says, hey, this is ready now. Okay, so now that I've gone in, why don't we just go and configure some taxes. So tax your shipping rates, tax inclusive pricing. We've got Australia, GST, tax file number, save, good to go. Okay, we've got our tax ID and we'll save and we are good to go. And then you can add additional rates. So if you had, you know, BAS excluded or GST. So if you're in Australia and you're selling coffee, if you've got the whole beans and there's been no processing, it's actually GST free. So let's go back here. All right, so we've passed the dashboard. Let's go through some of the other settings here just to, to have a look. Okay, so I'm in the orders area and I do have some orders in there, but I don't want to show them on screen because I've got some email addresses. So I just ran a filter. So I just clicked on here. And then I just showed all from today. And you can see that no orders has popped up. Now, if I did want to search, I can go through past orders. I can sort them. I can see up to a certain number of them and I can export them into a spreadsheet. Then we'll go to products. Let's go add a product and let's say coffee and let's create a category. Coffee, I'll call this one coffee beans. Selling price, let's say $20. Now, you do have the price at which you're offering the product, and then you've got the retail price. So if you wanted to say, look, it normally goes for 25, but today we're selling it for 20, then that's what you would do here. Uh, SKU, which is just your stock keeping unit or your, your inventory code. Then you can come up with a product description. Now there is chat GPT, but just remember that a good product description is like your SEO. So then your product details. So it might be your specifications. So height, width, weight, etc. You can put that in there. You can add some things like video, image, that sort of thing. Now tagging. Uh, tagging is only good if you've got a high volume of products and you want to be able to help someone search for a particular type of thing. Uh, if we go to brand, you might add uh, a range of brands. So let's just say if you had a particular type of uh, clothing and you wanted to show all of the Louis Vuitton stuff in one go, then you could use that. And that would just help with the search. So with the returns and then whether it's on sale, if there's extra tax, probably only in the US, interstate, ship separate package, dimensional weight, etc. Inventory, is this tracked? Yes or no? Uh, so quantity restrictions, can people buy a minimum, they have to buy a minimum of five. Maybe they want to buy a maximum of 20 because that's all you stock. Then you can put in some other codes, probably more for larger items. You upload your images, attributes. Now attributes can be a tricky one. This is what I was saying before, where I tried to sell t-shirts, but then I wanted to have a red, white, or green. And then you also want to have size. So you can put an attribute of size. You can really only put one attribute layer. So the tends to be a bit of difficulty. You can't have multiple selected criteria. Um, so here you might put small, medium, large. 
Uh, and then once you create the list, you can't actually go and edit it. So you need to get it right the first time. SEO title and keywords, specifications. Okay, let's save that one. So now we've got our coffee beans. Obviously, I've not got an image there, but if I did, that would come through. All right, let's go to categories. So at the moment, there's was some standard ones that are out of the box, and you can see there's another one here that's coffee. So why don't we go and delete that one? Yes, okay. And then let's add another one, and we'll call it T. Okay, save. Now I might put add a category, and we'll say maybe call it consumables. And again, you can give it its own SEO images, etc. And then we might create another one, which is equipment. Okay, so equipment, I'm kind of using that for like coffee machine, etc. But here we can quickly drag and make that subordinate and move those categories around. So that makes it easy to organize. Okay, so then we're going to go to collections. And in collections, we've got all products. So this is just another way to kind of group things. So you might create a collection which might be a starter kit. And in the starter kit is the coffee machine, maybe some filter pads, and then you might have a bag of beans. And the kit is three products together, but then it's together as a collection. So you can have the small home starter kit, or you might have the small office intermediate kit, or you might have the full bells and whistles new cafe kit. Let's jump into settings. So again, you've got you know your payment gateway, you can add shipping. Now you can plug into some shipping carriers, but very quickly you find you need to integrate to some other external parties. So we've got currencies, taxes, brands, managed stock coupons, so obviously your discount codes, your buy button. Now, a buy button is something that you can display on external websites. So you might be able to just take a little code and then embed it on another website. Price list, product filter. Okay, now obviously you want to set up your own domain name and you can set up an SSL. You can set email notifications, customize your invoices. There's some more advanced SEO functions and then your integrations. So most of your integrations here are obviously to other Zoho applications, one of which is absent here is Zoho Billing. So we can see books is there, inventory, CRM, page sense, which helps you with heat mapping, just determine how people are landing on your website. Are they clicking away? Are they going a certain path? That sort of thing. Live chat, so if they've got questions, they can talk to you and you can find out what you need to know. Marketing automation, campaigns, which are kind of the same thing, but a little bit different in a certain way. Lately, we've been doing a lot with marketing automation. It's had a bit of a, a facelift and there's a whole bunch of new features now available there. Zoho survey, MailChimp, and then Aftership, which is a, a new thing. If we jump over to reports, so these are your sort of basic sales reports. You've got traffic reports, you know, how people are coming to your website, where from, etc. You can look at top customers, payments, abandoned cart, which really helps you to understand how you're going with you know, people that put things into cart, but maybe they're not converting for whatever reason. And then in your store funnel. So this is where you connect your PageSense account. So let's go over to the site builder. So this is kind of like Zoho Sites. If you're finding this useful, I'd really love a subscribe a thumbs up and just leave us a little comment to let us know what you're thinking, any other questions and anything else you'd like to see in the videos. All right, back to the content. Okay, so we're in the site builder and it's kind of like Zoho Sites. So we can see we've got our menus, we've got our little sections, products. Products will render here, but none of them yet are published. So this is the all products collection. And if we come down here, we can see we've got our, we can add a little element in there. We've got our newsletter. So if we click on add element, you might be able to add perhaps a form. So we've got some standard blocks here. You know, you can put in your social profile, code snippet, if you want to put a video in there. If we go to apps, now this is where we get to put in Zoho bookings. So we can embed your calendar, Instagram, social share, forms. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can integrate with Zoho Forms, CRM Forms, or Survey Collections. Uh, that's where you add product collections. So you might then change that to a particular type of collections. So let's get rid of that one. Product category. So before we added coffee, tea, equipment, consumables. So those are coming through here. Products, we have a look at coffee beans. So if I want to highlight a specific product, then I can drag that one down here. 
Okay, so back on the website page, if I want to add a section, I can just hover here and go add section. And then there's a whole bunch of things that pop in here. I can select one of these and then modify it, or I can save a section, an element, again, with those apps, with those forms, collections, gallery, etc. So let's just say I want to change the banner. So I can click, see if I hover in here, I'm editing the text. If I come out here, I click the banner, and then it says the hero slide. But now I can change the image and pick another image, do that one, insert, and then there's the background. Okay, so yeah, you can play around with the, the size, overlay color, if you want to add additional images for mobile or tablet. Eventually, if you want to get further into CSS or JS, then you can do that. Again, you can go through and modify the pages. So if we go to pages, we've got a menu here. So we'll go to contact. Go to edit content. So now we're on the contact page. So now we get to put in, for example, update the address, put in the contact form. And once we're happy, we can publish it. And I'll just show you the preview. And here is our site so far. So we've got that image that we changed. Here is that coffee bean. And then we can add it to cart. And then obviously in preview mode, that's not going to work. But we can modify each of these sections to, to suit ourselves. And if you want to change those other images, you just got to click through and, and ch change them there, change all the text, that sort of thing. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. That is a overview of Zoho Commerce. If you've got any questions, don't forget to put them in the comments. Check out some of our other videos. We'll catch you next time.